what is great about Kaiju Ega is that you actually uh, have these creatures that are above morality and above ethics. They are forces of nature. Forces of nature. You see, for example, in uh, when Godzilla is fighting Mothra or Ghidorah, you 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 can root for the bad guy. You can root for the monster that is not the good kaiju. It's like a wrestling match in a way. You know, you can sometimes like the bad wrestler, the evil wrestler, more than you like the good wrestler. And in this instance, uh, when you see the movie, there's such undying love in the way we design, light, and animate the kaiju that uh, we just represent them almost like a tornado and the Jaeger is like a hurricane. They're forces of nature clashing in the middle of a city and bringing destruction that has uh, fortunately no, no reflection on the real world. Nobody's going to be worried about uh, a copycat kaiju attack <laughs> in a city because they saw, a kaiju saw the movie and he said, I'm going to destroy Seattle. <laughs> there, there is no real consequence. You rescued her. You raised her. You're not protecting her now. You are holding her back. One, don't you ever touch me again. Two, don't you ever touch me again. One, don't ever touch me. <laughs> yeah. That was that was all the man here. That was that was total that was a, improvisation. Yeah, that wasn't in the script. That. No, it wasn't in the script, but it was an improvisation. But you know, it was really about rank. You know, uh, you know, we Del Toro and I, and then we all of us, we spoke about the the sort of army, uh, the, the the strategy of the an army team here. This is an army. This is the resistance. And you know that scene. You know, he's you know he's kind of being insubordinate at the time. And you which know, comes like, very naturally for me. Yeah, well, no doubt. And uh, and I had to just put him in his place. And he, you know, I think it was one of those takes where, you know, he turns around and he pulls me and I'm walking past and he, you know, he's a big lad and he pulled me a little bit too rough, that take. <laughs> so I was like, listen, brother. Right, take it easy, hot dog. <laughs> I mean, every part of the kaiju cells, cartilage, spleen, liver, even the crap. But the brain, too much ammonia. So what's the deal, little fella? Well, that's classified. So I couldn't tell you, even if I wanted to. But it is pretty cool. Well, I think my character certainly, uh, it, it, there's probably a lot of Guillermo in that character uh, in terms of uh, my character loves these monsters and uh, instead of just wanting to bash them and destroy them, he wants to really learn from them. And um, Guillermo, as we all know, uh, loves monsters and, and creatures. So um, uh, perhaps that was his influence in writing the character. And I, I just uh, personally profit from their demise. I've, you know, created this relationship whereby, you know, I'll, I'll clean up this mess for you, and then I, you have to give me the exclusive rights to harvest these things and make a living selling to rare collectors, collectors of rare, you know. Plus, there's all these byproducts that I've that I've that figured out a way to, you know, kaiju powder is like Vi Viagra and. Hormone cream will make your skin into a 16-year-old, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's an endless wealth of wellspring to satiate the uh, unlimited appetites of our hedonist friend Hannibal Chow. <laughs> Enough. I've seen what I need to see. Me too. She's my co-pilot. Before the start uh, shooting, you know, Guillermo said, you are Mako as you are. So I think um, he found some way to, you know, maybe inside of me, it's, he can find some more Mako's, you know, characters, I think. But I don't think, you know, I, I'm like that person. But, you know, she's really brave and tough and she can um, face her trauma. The, I love this character. You know, as an actor, it's, you know, you, 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 you want to do a few things in your career, you know. You want to play a cowboy, and, you know, you want to be a, you know, a pirate or whatever it is, and you want to do the movie where you're saving the world. And this was, this was our version of that. This is like, you know, sort of being asked to be in Star Wars again, you know, and like playing Obi-Wan Kenobi or something, you know what I mean? That's what it felt like to play uh, Stack of Pentecost. 